like to come for a ride with me sometime. I know who you are. Oh, yeah? Who's that? One of them Bond Ramp boys. Hmm. My daddy says you boys are the worst thing ever to hit Franklin. You tell your daddy I said hi. We got a chance to make a good stack of money here. Pure corn whiskey. It's a white lightning. Come on, Forrest. See you dance. I ain't dancing for you two. Uh, come on. It's impressive. I respect you, Bond Rest. You want any more of this stuff? As much as you can bring me. That's two thousand dollars, minus my commission. Look at you, swanning around like you're Al Capone. They say in town you're looking for someone to help out around the place. Well, Mr. Bondrin, do I get the job? Seems you've been involved in certain illegal activities. There's a new special deputy. Been brought in from the city. Wants to work it out so everybody can do some business. That's all. I'm the one who's going to make your life real difficult from now on if you don't toe the line, country boy. I'm a bonder around. We don't lay down for nobody. Those men that attacked you, they work for dangerous people. There's a feeling around these parts that these Bondurants is indestructible. Do you mean immortal? <laughs> you any idea what a Thompson submachine gun does to a mortal? Everyone was. Really. The other actors, uh, producers, myself, every, everyone on set. There's a kind of a buzz around, like, <laughs> oh, what's Tom doing? Yeah. Well, it, at times it was like, um, uh, not so much buzz, it was like, oh my God, what the hell is he doing? He has a very unconventional approach to, um, uh, you know, how he break the, in, uh, breaks down a character and and then how his process is very mm. uh, different, you know, he, um, and the rehearsal process was a, a really great. I always involve the writer um, in the rehearsal because it's a time that uh, the actors, you know, uh, who are the, um, if with the right actors, they're great at, as interrogators of those characters because they have to embody it and say the words so it's very handy to have the scriptwriter there um, but for me primarily the most useful thing about uh, the rehearsal process is for me to actually work out how they work um, and what their needs are because I, I think every actor you know is as as different as every human um, so you have to kind of work out their personality and their their approach and it and um, at the end of the day it's whatever gets them there um, so I mean Tom actually didn't really his approach is not really to like a lot of actors really get uh, really kind of analyze the script and and uh, get you know deep into it and his is to actually keep it at, at a distance um, and and kind of circle around it in in unexpected ways, you know, um, just discussing Forrest, for instance, uh, you know, there was something that he brought up that was really fantastic, which was the, uh, he, he referenced um, the grandma and Tweety Bird and uh, the uh, old uh, sort of uh, matriarch of the family, which Forrest is, so he kind of honed in on unexpected qualities that made that character um, and the inarticulate kind yeah. of qualities which were, we were hinting at but he took it to a whole new level Amazing. Um, in a great way. She's kind of uh, actually stronger than him and she's stronger than all the brothers which is what we loved and, and we wanted to find an actress that had real gravitas and and he, uh, real depth uh, and range, and um, and that that worked out brilliantly. You know, they really clicked, and uh, it was a great dynamic. Um, and and they're basically both uh, misfits. You know, damaged people that find each other, and that that was really the the key was that kind of. Uh, 
and the uh, unexpected, the way that he couldn't articulate any feelings and uh, that she had to um, really hide so much from him and, um, and try to protect him and, and uh, the exact inverse of what you'd expect. I wasn't that aware of Jason's work and when I saw it, um, I, I mean, even like Public Enemies, I thought he was extraordinary and, and uh, I wondered where, the, I didn't even realise he was an Aussie from, uh, coincidentally, from the very outback town that we filmed the proposition in. I had no idea about. Um, and yet, um, you know, we were looking for certain qualities in Howard, a, 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 you know, in her physical size, a very, the opposite of uh, an internalised uh, stillness that Forrest had. We were looking for someone very um, uh, uh, kind of messy and extroverted and very physical. And he um, had all those attributes, very smart interpretation of the character. You know, Guy really wanted to do something different and we wanted him to do something different. Guy's incredibly nuanced and subtle and we love the idea of him being more flamboyant and uh, I kept referencing Jimmy Cagney and, and those mm. sorts of uh, guys from that time, you know, those larger than life characters, you know. Um, and, uh, and of course there's a, a big... Uh, um, dollop of Nick Cave in there as with the hair and the <laughs> suits. <laughs> Little nod to Nick. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was a collaboration really between the three of us. You know, we really he he really pushed Nick and I to to make uh Rake's um uh yeah more more multi dimensional, interesting kind of character. I mean he was always a kind of sociopath, um and a and a you know, a hard, hard deputy, but uh, Guy brought a whole new level to that. Yeah. It was literally that, and actually, if uh, we we created a whole new scene out of uh, a pre-existing scene, <laughs> uh, out of actual rushes um, that we doubled and did visual effects and put them in the Chicago Alley, which he was never physically in. Um, a bit of a spoiler there, but that's how much we wanted to, you know, get more of Gary in there. I mean, he was always meant to be, that character was always meant to be the, the kind of iconic gangster that we all love. And like Jack's, um, uh, Shire's character, Jack, uh, who is in awe of this guy, uh, we needed to find someone to fill those shoes. He could be in awe of, yeah. And Gary had it, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So he he just naturally uh, filled the screen and, and, uh, and in that way that we were hoping. Yeah. I mean, he was like Jack. He He's full of ambition and, and enthusiasm and commitment and passion and uh, a, a very, uh, I mean, Shia gets, I think, an unfair go in the in the media. Um, I think he's a very good actor. Yeah, I mean, he's I a mean, really good actor. Uh, I'll certainly, I mean, it was really uh, great seeing Guy Pearce and, and Gary Oldman being so impressed by Shia. You know, really? That, as an actor. Did yeah. they, did they um, say that to you? Oh, or yeah, you yeah, just yeah. Tell, yeah. Oh, they, okay. you know, um, so, so that was, that was great. You know, that's something that, uh, because again, uh, yeah, people have these preconceptions and they don't, you know, they get, <laughs> anyway, but Shia was, uh, the first one in, uh, didn't let go was so inspired by it all and um, uh, incredible to work with. So, um, uh, and with Mia as well, Mia Wasikowski, they, they're, they're related, there's such a sweetness and a, a tenderness there that was such a relief to this, or, you know, some of the other stuff going on in the film. And uh, so it was a real breath, you know, Breath of fresh air. He he had a, a quite a, a kind of um, yeah not as obvious a sort of character to 
to play, so it was quite a difficult role, you know. Um, so, and he was, uh, I love Shire. We are survivors. We control the fear. But without the fear, we are all as good as dead. This is a war they're waging. You ain't gonna survive. It is not the violence that sets men apart. It is the distance that he is prepared to go.